with this video, I want to show you how we can create this magical dreamy golden hour light with a simple Lightroom trick. If you want to follow along, as always, you can find all the raw files in the link in the description of this video. And now let's begin. We are going to be working with an HDR panorama. So the very first thing we, we need to do is to merge the image. That's pretty easy. Just select all the raw files down here in Lightroom. Should be around 35 raw files. And then right click on one of them, go to photo merge and choose HDR panorama. Now this is a very, very performance intensive task. So this will take a while. One eternity later. So after you waited for a few minutes, you should get a preview window like this. This is how our merged HDR panorama will look like. And honestly, I'm too afraid to change much here. I'm going with the cylindrical projection method because I think it just looks the best for this scene. You can try out different things, but be prepared to wait another few minutes. I'm also not going to use the boundary warp tool because this will distort the image too much and I don't like that. So basically I'm not changing anything. All I need to do is to hit the merge button and this will take another few minutes. So be prepared to wait. Okay, finally here we have the merged HDR panorama. Of course we can now crop it a little bit to get rid of the gaps towards the edges of the image. So let's take away a little bit from the left side and from the right side, from the bottom part and from the top. I'm not getting rid of all these gaps because I can fill them later with Photoshop's generative fill. So I'm quite happy with how this is looking. As you can see, the image is skewed a little bit, but we are going to fix that later in Photoshop as well. For now, let's work on applying that dreamy golden light effect. And we want to start this in the basic panel. So first I'm going to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape. This pushes the saturation some more and it will also make the darkest parts of the image just a little bit brighter. And for a dreamy effect, what we want to do is to just make the very darkest parts a little brighter kind of overall reducing the contrast and reduced contrast helps achieving this effect. I want to bring down the highlights because we have a very, very bright spot on the left side where the sun is shining through. Now I'm not getting rid of all the overexposure because I think having some blown out parts right in here adds some interesting parts to this image. So I'm just going to leave it in. I'm also going to bring down the exposure overall which further helps with the bright part, but it will also make the whole image darker. That's a bit too much. Let's bring it down a notch like this. So we made the image darker. Now let's make the darkest parts of the image brighter. I'm going to use the shadow slider for this and let's raise it slightly. And again, we are reducing contrast by making the darkest parts brighter. We can further work on this effect by bringing up the blacks. And you can already see how by adjusting the shadows and the blacks, we're adding a very, very soft, dreamy effect. This is the base for this effect. So for this image, pushing the blacks to around plus 50 looks pretty good to me. Looking at this, you can see the image is still on the darker side, but I think it's looking quite good like this. Now, I also want to adjust the white balance. At this point, we do have some pretty neutral color tones. Of course, we can change that by making this image warmer, increasing the white balance temperature. Let's bring it up just a notch and this will help with the golden light effect as it makes the whole image warmer. Then I wanna push the texture just a little bit, giving this image more sharpness. I'm also going to introduce some clarity for more structure. And now we are going to use negative dehaze for the dreamy effect. So all we need to do, bring down the dehaze slider. Obviously, the more we bring it down, the heavier this effect will be. You can also see if we bring it down far enough, the saturation of the image will get less and less. So if you bring the dehaze down a lot, you want to counter the color problem by bringing up the saturation. So this right here is a little too much for me. I want to bring back the dehaze a little bit. I'm more of a fan of more subtle values just around here looks good to me. And let me just 
show you how the image looked like without the basic adjustments. And you can clearly see how this is already looking really, really good. So I want to bring up the vibrance. I love having those saturated colors in forest scenes like this. And I guess that's it for the basic adjustments. Now let's take a look at the masking. And there actually is not much going on. I want to work on the foreground, so I'm going to use a linear gradient covering pretty much all of the foreground like this. And what I want to do in here is I want to push the contrast in the foreground. I'm doing this because we don't need that dreamy effect in the foreground near to the camera. We want to have the dreamy effect more in the distance while the foreground looks sharp and clear. So I'm going to bring down the shadows. This will also help making those leading lines a little bit stronger, more visible. Then I'm going to push the clarity slightly, adding more structure. And we could also bring up the whites for even more contrast. That looks great. I kind of want to dodge the highlights in the foreground. And to do that, we are going to create a color range mask. With the color range mask, I'm going to target some green highlights right here in the foreground. This is looking pretty good. We can probably bring up the refine slider, making the range a little bigger. And I don't want to affect the bright part up here in the sky. So I'm going to say subtract, choose linear gradient and just take away that part of the mask. Now what I want to do with these targeted highlights, I'm going to bring up the whites, making these even brighter and thus adding more contrast to the foreground where, where we can use it. Okay, then let's add a radial gradient right around the sun like this. I want to slightly bring down the highlights to get a little more detail in this area. Then I'm going to bring up the temperature, making the area warmer, kind of increasing that golden light effect. And if you want, we can add a little more glow to this area by again using negative dehaze. So let's bring down the dehaze. And you can see this works pretty good. I think I'm going with something like minus 30. Know that you are going to increase the exposure in this area as well. And this will just lead to some more overexposure here. So that's the image after the masking adjustments. Let me show you the difference. Here's the image with basic adjustments applied. And here we added some masking on top. Looks pretty good. Now we can do a little bit of color grading. So let's go ahead, open up the color mixer. I want to work on the saturation for this image, bringing up the yellow tones. And I also want to bring up the green tones. That looks great. Now we can also apply a little bit of split toning through the color grading panel itself. And we're going to use the highlights to improve the golden hour light effect. That means we're going to set up the hue with a color that represents the golden hour light. So somewhere in the yellow range, right around 40. And we are going to bring up the hue quite a bit. So the color is actually visible. And that's looking pretty good. Let me deactivate the split toning so you, so you can see the difference from before to after. Wonderful. We can also head into the calibration tab and play around with the blue primary slider, which will affect those green tones in a very pleasing way. So I'm going to bring down the blue primary hue and I'm going to push the saturation somewhere. Just like that. Perfect. And at this point, we're pretty much done with the Lightroom adjustments. All we need to do now is to add a bit of sharpening in the details tab. And as always, I'm using the same settings for all my images. I'm going to bring down the radius. I'm going to increase the details. I'm adding masking while holding down the Alt key because we don't want the whole image to be sharpened. Just the smaller details like this. And now let's bring up the amount of sharpening. Done. So that's it for the Lightroom editing part. If you don't have Photoshop or don't want to use Photoshop, you need to crop the image in Lightroom, obviously. But I'm going to switch over to Photoshop now. So right click on the image, go to edit in and choose Photoshop. 
So how can we fill those gaps? That's pretty easy. I'm going to select the lesser tool by pressing L. Then let's draw a rough selection around those gaps, just like this, and one at the bottom part as well. Once we made the selection, hit Generate Fill and hit Generate. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Of course, Photoshop is lagging ultra hard right now because I use Generative Fill. I don't know what's going on since the latest update. It's super annoying, but I think we can merge those two layers real quick. And now what I want to fix are those skewed trees on each side of the image. I'm going to duplicate that layer by hitting Control J to have a backup in case I mess something up. Then let's see if we can fix how we can fix that. I'm going to hit Control T to bring up the transformation and I'm going to right click. Actually, no. Let me hold down the Control key and take the, the upper right point and just drag it to the right. You see, I'm just trying to straighten the trees on the right side. Of course, this will make the trees on the left lean more towards the right side as well. So I'm going to take the point on the left side, again, holding down the control key and just drag it further to the left. And I'm just repeating this until I get a nice result like this. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Now, another problem is we don't have a straight horizon. If I drag down the guideline, you can see the right side is much, much higher. So I wanna change that as well. Let's again hit control T to bring up the transformation. And let's see how we can fix that. I'm going to hold down the control key and just drag down this point right there. And I think this is looking pretty good. So now I can deactivate the layer to compare to before, after. So with just a very, very simple transformation, we fixed the panoramic distortion of this image as well. And at this point, we are pretty much done with the editing. So I hope this little Lightroom tutorial was helpful and interesting. As always, if you have questions or want to add anything about the editing, let me know in the comments. And thank you very, very much for watching this video.